Hello everyone and welcome to the course on simulating fluid flows using Python. In the past few lectures, we had understood how to solve the steady one dimensional heat diffusion scenario. And in the lectures today and now onwards, we would be dealing with more advanced situations. So we are going to start with the, the two dimensional heat diffusion. Again, we are uh, going to restrict ourselves to unsteady scenarios. For now, we would look at uh, the unsteady scenarios as well. But for now, we would just handle the steady situations. So I'll first start with uh, a brief bit of motivation as to where uh, we typically find these situations of uh, two dimensional heat diffusion. And of course, that this is just one of the cases, the applications are quite a lot. After that, I'm going to talk about the governing equations, that is the equation that would govern this, uh, this physical process, which we would be going to discretize later on. So we'll look at the discretized version of this governing equation in order to get an iterative formulation. So just to remind you that now we are going to stick with the finite volume methods. So everything that we do from now onwards would uh, more or less be based on finite volume methods. I may or may not uh, say it explicitly, but uh, just keep in mind that we are going to use the finite volume methodology from now onwards. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. So on the screen, I'm trying to show you a very general uh, 2D heat transfer scenario, which is basically taken from uh, a case where we are trying to cool down an electronic component that is being heated. So consider that you have some sort of circuitry or a printed circuit board in some of your electronic system, which is represented by this uh, black outlined gradient filled uh, square. And underneath that, you have some heat generating source. So you can imagine that you have certain system that is running underneath it or probably over it, it doesn't really matter. But there is certain heat source that is also affecting uh, your system that you are trying to investigate, which is the PCB in this case. So you can imagine that uh, maybe some boundaries here, they might have some sort of insulations, whereas some other boundaries, it might be exposed to the atmosphere. So in these kind of scenarios, the temperature could be a function of both the X and Y. So the temperature could vary well along in this direction and also in this direction. And of course, that has to do with how the boundary conditions are implemented. So we have two complexities that we have added in terms of uh, what we had discussed previously. The first is the dimensionality of the problem. We have changed it from one to two and we are now trying to also deal with these kind of source terms as to if there is some source heat source or equivalently there could be a heat sink that the heat might be being taken away by the system. For example, uh, when you place the cooling pad uh, underneath your laptop that acts like a 2D heat sink. So hopefully this would give you an idea of where you can find these kind of scenarios and again that we are talking only in terms of heat uh, diffusion here but the same ideas can be also equally extended to other kind of diffusion for example uh, concentration and pollu pollu uh, pollutants concentration for instance so you don't have to strict strictly think in terms of heat only so before I look at the two dimensional version of this let me quickly recap about the one dimensional FVM scenario so when we discretize the one dimensional domain uh, that is represented by these points here, we considered a finite volume around any point of interest P. And we said that the points where this finite volume cuts the grid or intersects the grid, we call them as corresponding control volume faces. So we represented them as small e and small w. Now, let us look at how this would be changed or adapted to a two dimensional scenario. So before going into that, let me briefly talk about what are the governing equations. So in one dimensional scenario, where again for the steady case without any source or a sink term, we had our governing equation as this red equation that the d over dx of k dt dx is equal to zero. Now, 
if I include or if I know that uh, for a two dimensional system my temperature would be a function of both x and y. So, I am dealing in terms of Cartesian system here I am calling those x and y as Cartesian axis. It could be extended to cylindrical coordinate where you have r and theta or any other kind of coordinate system where you can define two variables. So, that is the two dimensions uh, that you can define there it is equally applicable. So, now my governing equation would modify as this green equation. So, here rather than a total derivative that is d over dx now I would have partial derivatives. So, one partial derivative or one term here that would take into account the diffusion in x direction and similarly the other term would take into account the diffusion in the y direction. So, here the temperature is a function of both x and y therefore, we are having this partial derivative. And in order to write these equations in more compact form you can also use this nabla operator. So, just do not get scared if sometimes you see this particular equation uh, because this as you can see it is a more compact representation of the green equation, but these two equations are more or less the same thing if we are talking in terms of two dimensions. So, now let us understand how we can uh, uh, define these finite volumes for such a two dimensional scenario. So, let me first uh, start by highlighting what was our computational domain. So, this uh, uh, dark blue line that you see on the outside that represents my boundary itself and what I do next is just like what I did in the case of one dimensions I discretize the boundary or I divided my boundaries into small number of chunks. So, for that what I am doing is I am having these points on the boundary. So, rather than this entire length you can think of capital L I am dividing into these uh, this capital L into multiple small lengths or you can think of in multiple small L's. I am doing that in both the horizontal and vertical direction. So, all these points that are represented in red color they are the boundary points and corresponding lead to each boundary point when you draw a vertical or a horizontal line that defines your 2D grid system. So, wherever one two of these lines would intersect we would have another point at that particular location. So, all these blue points they are a result when you draw vertical line from uh, the points on top and bottom boundary and horizontal lines from the point on the side boundaries. So, wherever those line intersected we have another set of points. So, these points are typically called as interior points to that domain. Just like in the one dimensional system we had two points on the boundary and we had multiple interior points. In this system we have four boundaries and accordingly we have more number of points on the boundary and we have even more generally even more number of interior points. So, that is a general representation of 2D grid in any kind of system. Now, if we have to talk specific in terms of finite volume method again we have to consider a point of interest P. So, if I represent this as point P then using my previous knowledge I know that the point lying right to it can be called as an east neighbor. The point lying next to it it is called uh, on the left it is the west neighbor. And similarly, if we know something from the geography, we can now define north and the south neighbors. So, the point to the top is the north neighbor and the point to the south is the south neighbor. Now, in order to define a finite volume now, we have to again think in terms of both the directions. So, if we have to sketch a finite volume, so the remember the finite volume should span around this point around the point of interest P, but usually it lies the faces of those volumes it usually lies midway between any of the two points. So, I can very easily define a finite volume like this and just like previously wherever the finite volume intersects the grid lines we can define the finite volume faces. So, just like previous we have the east face and the west face and similarly we can have the north face and the south face. I hope that this is clear I am trying to make it uh, very easy for you to understand, but still if you have any questions please do not hesitate to ask in the comments I would uh, try to answer them ASAP. Now having understood the finite volume 
let us just try to blow it up and see what we can do with it. So I've just blown up the finite volume here and I've tried to sketch a more general finite volume. So you can see that it's not a really a square. I'm trying to make it more rectangular so that we can now look at the generalized version of the finite volume and therefore the generalized discretization process. So here we know that in order to solve the governing equation using the finite volume method, we have to integrate that governing equation over that finite volume. So that's precisely what I'm doing here. I'm having this uh, volume integral. I should have written something to represent that. But you can see that we have dv sitting on the outside. And within these large brackets, I have my governing equation. So now we have a volume integral, but we have sort of an area element uh, because this uh, system is in 2D. So we still don't really have a proper volume. So what we would do is we would again use the Gauss divergence theorem. So what does theorem does is that it converts the volume integral to an area integral and we are introduced a new vector or the normal outward normal vector for that particular area. So again, if this process is not clear, please refer to any standard text on uh, uh, vector calculus. It is a very standard algorithm and you would find that I would be using this quite a lot during this course. So now once we have got this uh, second equation that says that the dot product of the outward normal vector to this quantity when integrated over the entire area is zero. Now the important part to understand is that this finite volume has four faces and therefore four areas. So you can think of the east face, west face, north face and south face. So when I'm thinking in terms of integration, I'm basically trying to sum it up over four different faces. So previously we only had two faces and when we dealt in terms of that, we get uh, this two terms in this equation that is Ka dt over dx at the east face minus Ka dt over dx at the west face. So this negative sign here is because the outward unit normal is pointing in the negative x direction when it is defined in terms of standard Cartesian system. And similarly, now if I look at the north face, I know that the unit normal is now, uh, out now pointing outwards in the positive y direction. And therefore we have Ka dt over dx at the north face minus, minus is because this vector would be pointing downwards which is the negative y direction and therefore this should be the k a dt over I'm sorry this should be dt over dy at both of these places so I'll quickly correct that so that there is no confusion so the, these both of these things are dt over dy I'm really sorry for this mistake so now we have got both of these uh, or rather four of these terms and now what we can do is we can interpret these gradients that dt dx terms and dt dy terms just like we were doing previously. So now we can do is we can simply write the first term using the central differencing as te minus tp divided by the spacing between the p and e points. I'm still keeping the generalized process intact. I'm not making any simplifications. I'm not assuming that any properties are constant. So that is why you are seeing K subscript E. And similarly, I can do it for the West face term, which is I hope you would be familiar to that. Now, for the North term, we have K N times A N just like before. And when I would discretize it on this face, when I would write the DT over DY at the North face, I would simply write that derivative term as Tn minus Tp. So because it's a gradient in the y direction, so that is why I have Tn minus Tp divided by Hpn, that is the spacing between the point P and point N. And similarly, it can be done for the south face as well, where the temperature difference Tp minus Ts would come into the picture. So just to get things clear, we have these four terms sitting. Now we can see that we have Tp appearing in all these equations and we have Te, Tw, Tn and Ts. Now hopefully if you get the idea from what we had done previously, we can cast this equation in this form now. 
that is aptp equals to aete plus awtw which was our equation previously plus antn plus asts so previously we had two neighbors so we had two terms on the right hand side now we have four neighbors so we have four terms on the right hand side in the generalized equation and you can also easily calculate that these coefficients can be given in this form that is k a divided by corresponding h and if you calculate a p it would be of this uh, little scary form but it is nothing but the sum of all other coefficients so usually in finite volume methods that is the sort of uh, simplification and correspondence that i was talking about between one dimension and two dimensional system that the discretized equations they remain more or less of the same form that is this aptp form you just have some extra terms and therefore extra coefficients so now you can imagine that if you have a 3d system you would have two extra terms corresponding to the top and the bottom face and similarly you would have ap equals to six coefficients summed together so this is why the finite volume methods are very powerful because you don't really have to juggle a lot between or rather there is a very direct uh, correspondence between these multi dimensional system so hopefully this discussion would give you an idea of uh, how you can uh, imply or how you can adopt a finite volume methodology for a two dimensional system this red equation is our governing equation or discretized governing equation that we would be used to solve the problem so the problem that we would consider is quite simple so it's an extension of the one dimensional problem so now we have a square domain you can take any length for it and we would have three boundaries at a temperature of 0 and one of the boundaries at a temperature of 1 so i'm basically just trying to extend that 1d problem of 0 and 1 so i'm trying to protrude this problem in two dimensional so that one of the boundaries is now at 1 and other boundaries are at 0 so again in terms of uh, looking at this problem through the glasses of python in the next lecture we would actually understand how to define these 2d matrices in python because previously we had these 1d arrays but as soon as we jump up the uh, dimensionality of the problem we have to understand how to define these matrices in python so before we would actually uh, rather see what the solution for this problem is we have to understand how to define these uh, variables in python how to make those operations so that is what we would be talking about in the next lecture but if you have any questions regarding this lecture which would sort of form the basis of the result section that we would be talking about maybe in a lecture or two please write them down in the comments and i would try to help you asap until then please stay safe and take care it's uh, the again the second waves in some of the parts are worsening very badly so please take care of yourself and stay home as much as you can in the next lecture i'll see you again